Epidemiologist at Boston Children's Hospital and ABC News medical contributor Dr. John Brownstein joins me now for more on all of this. Dr. Brownstein, good morning. How important is this idea of vaccinating children under 12? How important is that to reaching herd immunity? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's really important. It's great to see that Pfizer is joining Moderna in testing this vaccine in children under 12. It's a significant step in turning back this pandemic. And just to break down the trial, you know, what we're trying to do is look at different doses like in Moderna, you know, progressively, you know, looking at higher and higher doses up until the adult dose, in about 144 children. And then once we've determined that it's safe and effective, beginning to test this across 4,500 children. And these studies are super important because parents really want protection for their children. But more importantly, we're looking for that herd immunity. Um, we, we don't know exactly the percent. It's been estimated about 80 percent. And so given how large a uh, proportion of the population children make up, we need children to be immunized. We know that we're going to have vaccine uptake issues in the adult population. So to get that herd immunity, we're going to get children vaccinated. And not only that, you know, if we're thinking about reopening schools, we're going to be seeing sort of a requirement for vaccination coming up. We're seeing that in colleges even already. So this vaccination uh, of these pediatric populations is going to be super critical. Now, in the meantime, what should families do if the parents are vaccinated, but the children aren't? Yeah, this is a huge question and it, you know, it's very nuanced. I, I think, you know, we can start to resume day to day activities and do more as a family. Clearly with healthy children, they can start to see their grandparents. So as we know, the CDC is, has, has given the okay there. We can start to begin to eat out, hopefully outdoors. When it comes to travel, CDC is still not rec uh, recommending travel, but really if, if there's destinations that are local or maybe by car travel, those will be safer. You know, as the situation improves, we can do more. Um, as we get more adults vaccinated, case counts are down, test positivity rates are down. That's when we can start to really open up. And let's remember that, you know, children still represent 13% of the reported cases. So they're not zero risk. Um, and 13,000 uh, uh, pediatric patients have been hospitalized, 260 have died. So it's not zero risk. But at this point in the pandemic, you know, we have to be using our best judgment. I think people have a good understanding of individual risk. And a new study now says that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are safe for pregnant and lactating women. Plus, those women can pass those women. I just said women's plus those women can pass antibodies on to their newborns. So how significant are those findings and what is the latest recommendation on whether pregnant women should be vaccinated? Yeah, I think this is great news. And, you know, clearly, you know, the pregnant women were not a part of the trials and, you know, generally not always part of trials. So having this data of 131 reproductive age women who received the Pfizer Moderna vaccine was really important. It included 84 pregnant women, 31 that were lactating um, and found that uh, antibody levels were similar across the groups and really no differences in side effects. Um, and even more importantly, those who had a previous infection versus vaccine, the vaccines created more strike antibody levels. And on top of that, yes, we heard that there was um, vaccine-induced antibodies in umbilical cords and breast milk. All of this is, is adding to this growing body of evidence that getting you know, the vaccine to pregnant women makes a lot of sense, especially when you think that pregnancy is in the high-risk category when it comes to COVID. Uh, 80,000 pregnant women tested positive for the virus, 88 had died. So, you know, really this is good news to try to get this vaccine to more of the population. And I wanna hit you with some viewer questions now. The, the first is if you've already had COVID, how does the vaccine affect your body? Because I have heard anecdotally that it, the first vaccine is actually harder for those who've already had the virus. What do we know about that? Yeah, I mean, it's very similar to getting the second dose of the vaccine. It's sort of acting like a booster. We, we don't know fully when you've had previous COVID how long immunity lasts. So the, the reactions people have will be highly varied. Uh, but overall, what's happening is you're just boosting protection. Um, and so similar to the second shot, but there's no evidence that, you know, the COVID vaccine, when you've had previous COVID, is any, uh, creates any additional risk. It's the same kind of uh, adverse events like sore arm, fatigue, muscle aches, fever. So similar to the second dose, and really it's absolutely recommended even if you've had COVID previously. We've also heard conversations about people who've had the virus possibly only needing one vaccine. What do we know about that at this point? 
Yeah, I mean, listen, when we were in a situation where we did not have a lot of supply, this idea of giving a single dose to people who have had COVID previously makes a lot of sense. And the data suggests that you can generate a really robust protection. The problem is we just don't know how long your previous uh, immunity lasts. Depends on when you actually got COVID, how strong the infection was. So there's so much variability in the population that the best sort of protocol is to just give people both doses um, in vaccine community constrained environments, it makes sense to, to sort of adjust these dosing strategies to get vaccines to, to more people. We're just not in that situation right now because the U.S. is really starting to ramp up vaccinations at two and a half per day. So I think everybody will be able to get the full dosage. And then one more viewer question for now. Easter Sunday is coming up next Sunday, April 4th. Do you expect a surge in cases from that holiday? Yeah, this is a good question. I think generally we're gonna see less travel than Thanksgiving. Of course, we have the vaccines that are rolled out very different than we've seen through other times of this pandemic. My best guess is we might see a bump in cases um, because you know we have reopenings because of travel, but also because of the variant, we have B117 circulating. Um, so we might see a bump. People should still try to be as safe as possible, but overall I'm pretty hopeful. You know, Families are gonna start to see each other again for a holiday, which is pretty amazing. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, always great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.